This Coptic Stitch journal was created from the box that I purchased K-Cups for my Keurig in. And I am going to just create the cover for this book in this video. If you would like to know how to Coptic Stitch, I will link a video below that is strictly how to Coptic Stitch a journal. So check that out if that is what you're looking for. My name is Peg. Call my channel to Ocos. I hope you'll take a moment and subscribe to my channel and join me as I learn and experiment a lot of different things across the mixed media world. If you like the short videos that are kind of to the point, go ahead and hit that notification bell and you'll be notified when I upload additional content. We're going to start this book with 50 pound sketch paper to create the signature. I'm folding the paper in half, utilizing five sheets to create one signature, and will likely use 10 to 15 signatures to create this book. So we'll get all that paper folded and set that aside while we create the cover. The reason I like to do my signatures first is I find it is easier to measure my signatures and cut my cover to accommodate them rather than create my cover and try to find paper, fold paper, trim paper to accommodate the cover. So I've just measured the signatures. I'm going to jot that measurement down so I know how to cut my cover. The cover is being created out of cardboard, so I'm utilizing some surgical tape just to seal those edges where you have those cells and I want to avoid getting any moisture down in those and warping this cardboard. The cover I will be utilizing rice paper. Want to print it so I pulled out some parchment with a tiny touch of pink in it and that is what I'm going to start with. The intention of this book originally was to create this real soft, powdery, pale pink with a gilded, waxed gold over the top of it. And I got a little sidetracked from that, but let's go ahead. Let me go ahead and show you how I started and where I ended up. Utilizing rice paper, pulling just my background, which is going to be that soft pink. And that worked out fine. I want two sheets, or I find I need two sheets. I'm going to look and see if I can get two covers out of one sheet, but my covers are too big, so let's pull the remnant of the paint that's on the gel press on a second sheet of rice paper. And that is perfect. A little gold. And I will just spread a thin layer of gold and lay my pink background and pull that gold, <clears throat> excuse me, onto the pink. Let's do that once again for the second sheet. Picked up a empty tape container or the roll that's left when the tape is gone and use that just to create some marks on my gel press. And I like how that looks. So I'm pulling the ghost print or what was left on that first gold pull that we had. And that cleans the plate off and gets just a little bit of that circular mark <clears throat> on both. And now to 
bring in some distress oxide spray. And I'm just going to pick a color that's a little bit darker than the light pink that I used. And, and I picked up salmon and tattered rose. The salmon is much darker, so I went with that. And now to glue this down, I'm utilizing Yes Paste, putting a thin coat on my cover, and I will just wrap that rice paper like a gift and get this covered. There, I have it positioned where I like what we are going to be presenting on the cover. Just trim those edges and now just fold it over like it was a gift. I'm going to pull my bone folder out and really um, secure those lines or those folds. And that just keeps them from being bulky. Just cut out the excess. And we'll get these glued down. And once that is completed, I will stick this in this Gears Tim Holtz embossing folder and run that through my Big shot, and now I have an embossed cover. So we'll do that to both the front and the back. And I wound up getting one side embossed, one side debossed. So, you know, I put it in. Uh, reverse the second time, not intentionally, but that's how it turned out. And, and I think that works fine for the front and the back of a book. And now to pull out that Ranger Tim Holtz Foundry Wax that is created to provide you with a metallic shine on your projects. We'll get those out. I have one here in mind and one in gilded. And I'm starting with the gilded. It has a little ball in the bottle to mix. So shake that good. And I'm using a brush to apply it. <clears throat> and I'm just randomly applying it across that cover. And it is set with heat. Now, I am moving my bottle away from the heat source because I don't want to run the risk of setting up the remainder of that wax inside the bottle. So I'm moving that away from the heat. And that sets up really nice. I can see it change as you <clears throat> run the heat across it. And I got a little aggressive with the heat gun there. I have a little scorch mark. Let's see if that will wipe off. Most of it does, but I do have a remnant there, but I have an idea to cover that up for later. So I'm just going to get a little more wax laid down there.
There's the difference between the two covers. I like the way that gilded looks. And I did get a little heavy handed with the wax. I was really interested to see what it would do. It was the first time I had ever used it and I really laid it on thick and I am not unhappy with the way that turned out. So normally I think that I would use this to highlight, but I got kind of carried away on this cover and wound up covering the entire cover with just the wax. So the cover became a gilded wax and mined wax is the other color that I'm using cover. And I like the outcome. So I'm not unhappy with that result, especially utilizing this gear um, embossing folder. So I have lost the pink almost all together. And now I'm just going back and where there might be any remnant of the pink covering that up. I'm just highlighting those gears with that mind. You know, I think it's interesting to see how everyone uses a new product and picks it up and tries it and experiments with it. And this is the first time that I use this. So of course it is just an experimentation. That's why I used a cardboard box to create the cover. Now I'm just trying to clean that scorched Mark, once again, I thought a little sandpaper might pull that scorch off, but it is there to stay. And now my end sheets that I created are pink. So I'm thinking through now what I'm going to do with those. But to cover that scorch mark, I have these little metal gears. And the foundry wax is supposed to work on metal as well as paper. So let's pull those gears out and give it a test run on the metal. And it is adhering quite well to these little metal pieces. I'm going to place that over my little scorch mark and create a little focal point on my cover, utilizing glitter glue to glue those down. I'm just going to interlock them here on the front. And now to get these in sheets and I stenciled with that foundry wax and wasn't happy with the way that turned out. I'm pulling in some raw umber and I'm going to just cover up that pink with the raw umber. On my gel press. There we go. Now we have something to start with. Let's just clean this gel press off. I'm going to hit it with some embossing, just these little tiny dots. Don't want anything to conflict with the gears, but I want a little bit of raised area. Coming in with the mined foundry wax. Let's take the heat to that and see how that turns out. And then we'll highlight it. 
a bit with the gilded. I'm going to use my finger for the gilded and just lightly brush over that embossed area on the paper. Maybe hit it with a little more on the side that's not embossed just to bring that gold throughout. And we'll heat that up and see how that turns out. But I think that's going to look nice inside that book. Now let's glue it to the inside. And oh my, we have some pink <laughs> that is still, still showing. So let me grab that foundry wax again. And we'll just cover those edges and we will eradicate the remainder of the pink. And I'll do that on both. Paste down my end sheet. I'm going to clip that down so it is connected, it gets a nice connection everywhere while it dries. And that completes that cover. So here's the front cover and the back cover, the in sheets. I think that turned out quite nice with that foundry wax. Now I'll lay my signatures in there and Coptic stitch it together. And once again, this is how the Coptic stitch will finalize. If you want to see how I Coptic stitch, I have linked a video in my description, choosing my wax thread and there is the completed cover so thank you for joining me i appreciate it if you take a moment and subscribe i would appreciate that very much and of course your likes and comments help my channel so i do appreciate you when you give me that thumbs up